Hang on to your noses, Wargamers. Today on The Joy of Wargaming, we're going to be doing an unboxing, and for us, we're going to do things a little different, because in this edition, we have an actual box. Before we see what is inside the box, I wanted to show you the figures that we are using to help us illustrate the scale of what's in the box. And I chose two figures today, and I need to show them to you to help you orient yourself. This gentleman here on the right is from Ralpartha Europe. He's a 15 millimeter, call him a wizard with a sword. And the gentleman on the left, I believe is from Alternative Armies. He looks a lot bigger. That's because he is an ogre, an armored ogre with a sword. And of course your usual stripy pants. So don't let the big boy's size fool you. He is a 15 millimeter figure. I have been known to use True 25s, 225 mm. I have been known to use 25 millimeter orcs as 15 millimeter ogres, but we're not doing that today. Today, we're taking a look at a little bit of terrain, and as we go through this, it'll become clear why I told you to hang on to your noses. This particular kit. This is a $13 kit. It's available from The Print Pyre. And I gotta tell you, I ordered this like early last week. It took maybe a week to get here. There's only two, call it, bubble wrapped packages in here. And I'll save you as much of the crinkling as I can. This isn't a movie theater. Maybe we'll just edit that out. If I really wanted to give you the true movie theater ambiance, I'd make sure to wait until the baby next door was having a bout of colic. His usual 10 o'clock bout. Um, so here you go. $13. Look at all this great stuff you get. Um, and look at how well it scales with your 15 millimeter figures. So you get a couple of, what is it, canoptic pots. You get a nice flat mummy, one, two, three standing columns, and one broken column. You get two tall round columns and two pyramid pieces. So there you go, not bad. It's all in a nice hard resin. Uh, mummy fits in here and looks pretty sharp. So all of this can be used for your dungeon terrain if you want, or, you know, as I look at these urns, I don't know much about Egyptian history. In fact, today I just read an interesting article. Now, you know, I, a couple of caveats. First of all, I read this on the news, so take it with a grain of salt. And also, it was an interview with a university professor type, and you know we know how trustworthy they are these days. They were talking about the fact that um, a lot of Egyptian statues lack noses, and I always thought that was because noses stick out. They fall off really easily. Think about the classic Sphinx. I had a history teacher in high school said that Napoleon's boys shot the nose off the Sphinx for target practice and that never really passed the smell test for me, if you'll forgive the pun. Uh, it just didn't feel right in my gut and the uh, eggheads that I was reading today said, explained that defacing a statue by trimming off its proboscis was a way of uh, trapping its soul in this realm and uh, helping to forget that they ever existed that whenever a regime change occurred and the next people in power came in, they did everything they could to deface the statues to deny the power of those who came before. Boy, uh, aren't you glad we don't live in a society like that anymore? So, what a lovely little... lovely little uh, peak of a pyramid that comes there. So for me, this is going to go with my desert terrain. Uh, nice little bit of scatter. I'll base it. And that leads us to the other box that I wanted to show you because with this, I think we're just about ready 
to build our desert terrain box. I showed you in a previous video these lovely little street safety discs, a little bit of vegetation, a whole lot of palm trees, and then I even have from, I think this is a Rebel Minis figure, more crackling, at least it's not the Skittles, a nice little desert tent. And I can show you the scale on this guy. You know, a, a simple tent in a vacuum is doesn't tell you a whole lot. So you can see it's a little on the small side, but most terrain is. It's great for representing what it's supposed to be. Once I paint it up with some stripes, it's going to look fantastic. The goal here is to build an entire desert table that fits inside this box. That's what these MDF boards are for. I bought a two foot by four foot panel for something else. Just trimmed it down, used a belt sander to smooth out the edges to bevel those a little bit. And hopefully, we'll be able to put together a nice, solid game set in there, and I may even wind up purchasing new figures for it. My original intention was to use it for Strictly Fantasy. I have a couple of undead that would work great as Tomb Guardians, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized once I have a desert table, even just with terrain that fits in this box and a simple drop cloth, that's this. Eventually I'll show you how we paint it up to make it look a little more deserty. Once we get there, I could use a desert for any era at all. So what I might do is put it up to you guys and ask you, what do you want me to do next? Pulp? I've got a great rule set here I'm looking forward to using. This is Goal Systems Chaos in Cairo. Look at that sexy boy. Doesn't that look like fun? Uses the Goal System Four Color Studios, written by, uh, what do we got here? Written by J. Lee Howard. And the core rules of Goal System, of course, are by the inestimable Scott Pyle. We can go pulp. I may do modern day. Now, the modern day won't have nearly as much use for these guys, but uh, with a couple of pieces of, of Adobe appropriate buildings and a, a nice oasis, a couple of ruins, a couple of stone walls maybe, we should be able to do even a modern terrorist operation. I've got Black Ops, but uh, I've only ever used Black Ops for science fiction battles. Might be nice to pick up a package of of terrorists and a package of, of, I should say, Middle Eastern terrorists. We have to be careful these days. There's so many of them running around. Um, oh, and then, of course, some, you know, American forces, some modern forces. But you can get away with a couple of squads, you know, 10 on each side, 10 to 12, and maybe play a little force on force even. So I'm going to leave that up to you guys, I think, what you're most interested in seeing. But that's for months down the line because... I still have a whole lot of other things to get to first, and this is going to be on the back burner. We'll see what other kind of fun things I can squeeze into the one box of desert. I mean, this is a shoe box. It's going to be tight, but I think we could fit probably two or three little 25-man skirmish systems in there. That's all I have for you today. Look forward to uh, a lot of promises made here, and I'm looking forward to you guys keeping me honest, because this is a hobby that is social in nature despite the best efforts of our leaders and we're going to be social and we're going to hang out if we can't do it in person we'll just do it digitally we'll just do it virtually and uh support each other prop each other up i'll shoot you a link to where you can get these there's an etsy shop like i said print pyre look for the link in the description and until next time be good to each other god bless you